All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This week, we are doing our third ranking of the video, which will be ranking the Percy Jackson series. So as with the last couple of ranking the videos, I'm going to be going through each book in the series and ranking them as to my particular preference. As always, if you guys have a completely different ranking system, you guys can always leave those down in the comments as well. I would love to hear you, your rankings of the books and why you rank them as you do. So as always, if you guys have been enjoying my content, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, also, hit the notification bell so you can get notified when I drop my next video. As I talk about each of the books, I will have a card which will link to that book's specific video if you guys want to go and rewatch it. But make sure you guys stay through to the end of the video where I will announce our next book series we will be reviewing. So, with all that out of the way, let's hit the intro. <music> guys starting out we have at number five sea of monsters unfortunately i really do kind of consider this the worst of the five it's still a good book don't get me wrong i just consider it the worst of the first five so one of the things that uh really does drag this down this book down for me is just how ham-fisted and blunt and direct the message of the book is. And that message is, you are family, no matter what, you have to look out for each other. It's a good message, don't get me wrong. I just think it comes off way, way too strong. Definitely stronger than it absolutely needed to be. There's a super ham-fisted message. I mean, it's an important one, but it's just so ham-fisted and like just blunt. And that's just the one thing. It's really, really blunt and direct when it really doesn't necessarily needed to be. So taking the number four spot, we have Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. So don't get me wrong, I really, really do like this book, but like I said in my video for this book, there are slight, slight, slight pacing problems, and it mainly in the middle of the book. They go from city to city to town and stuff, and they meet these monsters, and like I said, I really do appreciate that, but I feel like there are one or two too many that don't necessarily need to be there. And if they cut them out, we wouldn't have lost a lot of the story and it would have ended up working just as well. I feel like there are one or two too many and just the pacing suffers slightly. The pacing's still good. But I feel like if Reardon had cut one or two of these uh, little scenes, the pacing could have been much, much better. But aside from the slight pacing problems, like I said, I really, really do enjoy Lightning Thief, and it is a awesome start to another really awesome series. <music> Guys, so taking the number three spot, we have Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth. So, main reason I put Battle of the Labyrinth so far up on this list is just because the pure escalation of stakes that actually happens within this book. Because this book is actually the first real time that the forces of Camp Half-Blood and Kronos have actually, like, openly met in a large-scale battle. There have been a bunch of small-scale battles, yes, but this is the first large-scale battle with casualties and everything, and you can just feel the emotion Percy's going through, through Rick's writing and everything, and it's just a really, really good, uh, just well done battle. Uh, I personally think it's way too short, and if you see my video, you know why. Grover's deus ex machina pan scream really, really bothers me. Uh, I won't bore you with why it bothers me, just watch that video, but I... I hate it. It just comes out of nowhere. I don't love the ending of this book. That's why I didn't put it... I put it above the others, but I can't put it any higher. But the other reasons I put this book as high as I did is... A, the reintroduction of Rachel. I really like her as a central part of this book. I think she's a really good character. She works really well off Annabeth, and she really works well off Percy. I just really feel like that's really good chemistry the three of them have together. Also, Calypso and what she represents being a person who has been wronged by the gods just because she supported the Titans but didn't fight in a war. 
she got exiled to her island. I feel like that really is a good dynamic. And also the pure Annabeth development that we get through everything we see. She is leading this quest and we finally get to see a lot of her uncertainty because up until then she had been super confident and knew what to do. But now she's in a leadership position and she's like, I don't necessarily know what I want to do here. And it's a really good use and expansion of her character. <laughs> So taking the number two place, we have Titan's Curse. So I love this book because this is actually the first book where Percy has actually seen the stakes raised because of Bianca's death and everything. Spoilers as it is, but it, you've probably already read the book and know what happens. Like this book is the first time Percy has really dealt with death. All the other times, his friends have either come back to life or have been completely fine and healed. This is the first time where he's experienced permanent death and just the pure emotional shock on Percy as Reardon is writing that is just incredible. It's heartfelt. You just, you feel for Percy in that moment and it's just, it's a pure shock, but it's, it pushes the world forward in a direction that it really needed to go in at that point. So as always with Titan's Curse comes the intro of one of my favorite and everyone's fan favorite character, Nico D'Angelo, aka Death Boy. I love him. He is such, such a good character. So well written. Uh, Reardon really does a really, really good job of writing his emotional arc between him trying to find the wrong of his sister's death to him realizing that he can't hold a grudge. It's not healthy. It's a really good arc. I feel like Reardon does a really good job writing it. The only one slight complaint point is I do consider Nico underutilized somewhat. Nico is utilized at his best. It is awesome. When he's not, I kind of feel like it's a waste of a very well-written character. And I just really do love Nico and I really, really want Reardon to continue to use him in the best way possible. <laughs> Taking the number one spot, we got Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian. Alright, so this is the big final battle, the culmination of everything we've all been waiting for. The final battle between Percy and Camp Half-Blood and Luke and all of Kronos' forces. It's finally, finally come down to this. I love this book just because how just grand of a scope this is. It's a massive battle that takes place all over New York, particularly Manhattan, and it's just massive. Everyone's all over the place. Percy's just running around trying to help everyone. You can, through Rick's writing, you can really feel Percy's desperation to try and help all of his friends. And when he sees one of his friends die, he just takes it so hard and just wants to do whatever he can to protect everyone he can. And it's because all of the stuff that he's gone through in the last four books, that's led him to this point. This book is just the culmination of Percy's story arc, and I appreciate everything. It is the best of the books. Despite the whole thing I mentioned about the Selena Beauregard thing and the spy, I do personally love this book. It is the best out of the five, and I, it is a great conclusion to the Percy, to the first five of the Percy Jackson series. The other thing I really, really do love about this book is all the stuff Rick Reardon brings back. He brings back the Minotaur. He brings back uh, Medusa's whole stone uh, garden thing. I appreciate that stuff because we've all been around since the beginning reading this series and it feels really good to see all that come back into effect. The other thing that I really, really love about this book is just how seamlessly it sets up for the Heroes of Olympus. Because literally, the Heroes of Olympus thing starts almost immediately. There's a bit of a time skip, but almost immediately after all this happens, Heroes of Olympus starts. And I just appreciate how seamlessly Rick was able to bridge the two series with the whole thing with Rachel getting the, bit, the next big prophecy at the end of The Last Olympian. So don't worry, before you ask, yes, I will eventually be getting to Heroes of Olympus. I have a couple of things planned in the meantime, but I will eventually get to that. Don't worry. Okay, guys, thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. I really appreciate it. If you guys like the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, 
Also, hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I drop my next video. Down in the comments, if you guys have your own book order for the Percy Jackson series, I would love to read that, so don't be afraid to drop those down in the comments. Also, if you guys have book recommendations you want me to do in the future, you can drop those down there as well. So, the next book series I decided we will be doing is Ridley Pearson's The Kingdom Keepers. If you guys remember my top 10 book series video, this was on it. So, it was only a matter of time until I got to this. So, I am really psyched to do this. This is one of my personal favorites. Through me doing those book reviews, you'll find you'll really want to read this as well. So, next week, we will be doing The Kingdom Keepers, book one by Ridley Pearson. Alright guys, glad you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, again, like share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I hope you guys have a great week and keep on reading.